What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is the Blacklist Season 6, Episode 10, The Crypto Banker. Whew, holy crap. This, this show just keeps me guessing. Just keeps keeping me guessing. Because I could not have told you where this was going to go. I could not have predicted this. I mean, we get into this, tr this next part of the trial where now they're going to be accusing him... Uh, basically, all of the stuff that he's done since the the treason thing and all of that. And, yeah, I'm just like, okay, so what? Is he going to basically bite his time, kind of stretch it out until they can find out what this conspiracy is going on? And then he can, like, trade it for his life, basically? Like, who, whatever this terrorist attack is going to be. And then just within the first few minutes, all of a sudden Seema, just out of nowhere, like, oh yeah, we're going to talk about the immunity agreement now, which then convinces Reddington to say, no, never mind, I plead guilty. And then he tries to break out of prison, because he's like, yeah, sure, give me the death penalty, I don't care, because he thinks he's going to get out, and then he doesn't get out. <laughs> I'm just like, wait a minute, like, that's... That's not how this goes. Like, Reddington, when he plans something, it works out because he's Reddington, right? Like, he figures it out. He solves the problem. Why is this happening? <laughs> and I mean, ugh. again, it's just what it comes down to, honestly, it comes down to chance. You know, like, because <sighs> if, if Liz doesn't show up when she does, Reddington has those few extra seconds before somebody announces that Reddington's trying to escape. But she shows up right at the perfect time. And of course, she doesn't plan this. Like, if this were something where she knew he was trying to escape and then she set it in motion to make sure he didn't get out, that would be one thing, because obviously she's the one that put him there to begin with. But this was honestly like she had no clue what was going on. It's just by chance that she shows up right as he's about to try to break out. <laughs> and I don't know, it's just... Very, very interesting um, how they've set it all up, really. Because I don't know what to expect next. You know, he's already, he already basically said, sure, give me the death penalty, to which the jury complied and said, yeah, we'll give you the death penalty. He failed as a, at his escape attempt, which means he's going to be executed soon. Unless there's like a long line <laughs> for death row and he's got to wait a little bit, his time is limited. So... I'm sure whatever these next two, because I'm pretty sure these are both Bastion Moreau back to back. So I'm assuming somehow he's going to have the pieces to help Reddington expose this conspiracy that's going to help him get out of there somehow. I, I don't know. Like, I can't really think of how that would work because at that point then you do expose the immunity agreement anyway. And that's why he accepted the, the guilty charges in the first place. So the only thing I can think of is that he somehow put something in place to make it seem like he gets executed, but he doesn't actually, and I don't know how he would do that. Like, he'd have to pay off a lot of people, and I don't know that he's in the place to do that at the moment. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's a lot going on, and it's definitely got me interested to see what's coming next. So um, the other thing to talk about in this one is the story with the the guy who's being hacked and you know the pacemaker the pacemaker maker it's kind of a weird <laughs> terminology for it but yeah his whole story kind of interesting you know he really felt for the guy because of his daughter having the pacemaker and having to deal with the fact that somebody's threatening her to basically <laughs> get money from him um but yeah all that stuff you know, I kind of figured the hacker wasn't actually the crypto banker because this other guy seemed to be the one in charge. So whenever he shows up, he's like, I got a problem. The feds are on me. I'm like, dude, you just signed your death warrant. So that was a little predictable that he was about to die. Um, but yeah, I mean, just everything they had to do at the end to try to stop the, the thing going through, the algorithm going through that shuts off all the pacemakers and kills a bunch of people. Like, it was, it was pretty intense. I was kind of on the edge of my seat like, oh, God. They even threw a little bit of levity in there because Rom stops for a second. He's like, Agent Wrestler, is that a zero or a letter O? Just a little, it was almost kind of a joke thrown in. I'm like, at, at a time like this? Um, also, I really appreciated the daughter getting to nerd out with a Rom for a second, talking about like these comic book characters and 
not all comic book characters, but essentially superheroes that have force fields and stuff. That was that was really adorable. Um, but yeah, I mean, all in all, it's a very interesting episode. It sets up very well for these kind of final two episodes. I'm pretty sure of the first half of the season. If I'm wrong about that, then I don't know. They they really made it feel like this is building up to here's that the first half of the season ending right here with these next two episodes. But I guess we'll see what happens next. On to the next one. See you there. And now episode 11, Bastion Moreau. Whew. I know he's not going to die, but still, I mean, man, the show does a really good job of like building up the intensity, even though you know the character's not going to die, right? Like, it's just, I don't understand how they do it, but like that whole final scene... Some people may look at that and be like, oh, come on, we know he's not going to die. Why are you dragging it out so much? There's just still something very emotional about it, though. Like, the way that the acting is in the show and very good, like, music selection at the right times and, you know, good direction in general. It just really all comes together very well. Um, but, yeah, I mean, overall, kind of straightforward as far as this episode is concerned. Um... It's kind of like building up to, I guess, the next one, which actually, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I actually don't know if next, the next episode is supposed to be the mid-season finale or not, because I, I still haven't looked up to see if that is, in fact, the case. Um, but, I mean, it really does feel like this is just building up to what is the next episode, which is going to be how I guess they get Red out of this situation. And I really don't know how they're going to do it. And that's something that I really have to applaud, is that they've done a great job of making me go, how are they going to fix this? Like, how is Red going to get out of this situation? Because it seems like a no-win situation, right? Like, if the president were a good guy, and if he were a guy that's like, oh yes, I'm all about helping and making sure things work out, that would be one thing. But this is something that he wants to happen. This Red is actually his enemy in this situation because Red's the only one that can stop his plans. So even though Cooper now has this plan on like, oh, I'm going to tell him to do this or else I'm going to ruin his career, it doesn't matter because Red's in his way, right? So, I don't know, it feels like even though Cooper's figured out what's going on, he's figured out that Reddington knows what's happening, and he knows everything, which is, you know, just the few clues talking about, you know, like, the bug, the bug guy, um, which they brought the sound back, thankfully not for very long, that chanting sound, or whatever it is, just came back for a second, and I got PTSD flashbacks, and I was like, oh god, <laughs> um, but, I mean, Reddington knows everything, and he knows how to stop it, but it's the president's plan, so... I'm wondering if Cooper's going to figure that out and if he's going to realize that he needs to do something about this. But the thing is, what can he do? You know, because he's got, like he said in the car, it's 10 minutes to fix this problem. <laughs> so even if he gets in there and realizes the president is involved in this conspiracy, he doesn't really have enough time to call somebody and stop the execution in that little amount of time. Um... So, I don't know. I The only thing, like, the only theory I have forming in my mind is that somehow Reddington... Because, I mean, he has to know what all goes into an execution, right? Like, he has to know what drugs they use and all of that. Is it possible he somehow prepared for this? And, like, has some drugs in his system or has something that he's done where he's kind of like the Princess Bride where he's, like, built up an immunity to something that would normally kill him? Like, is that the route they're going to take here? Because that's the only thing I can think of at this point. Like, it's so late in the game. I really doubt the president's going to be like, oh, sure, we'll stop the execution for the man who can ruin whatever plan he has in place to begin with. That's the thing. I don't know what exactly is going on. <laughs> like, I don't know what this dossier contains. I don't know. Like, I don't have any theories about any of the conspiracy going on that Reddington knows about. Um, so I'm just, I'm waiting to hear. I, I thought maybe the lady was going to tell Wrestler and Nababi about what was in it before she died. Um, but then, of course, she coughed up bugs instead. And I'm just like, cool. Got to see that visual again. That's fun. <laughs> um... 
but yeah, I mean, just again, for a an episode that is kind of just a filler, just a build up episode that's like setting up for what is going to probably be the climax and the resolution. It's still really, really good, and it's, I don't know, it's just very entertaining, and they're doing a great job of keeping me on the edge of my seat, even though I know, you know, again, I know Red's not going to die. I know he's going to make it. It's not really much of a spoiler, because again, you don't really kill off your title character before the series ends. That's why whenever Liz died, I was like, okay, but she's coming back, right? Because she's one of the two main characters. Like, if Wrestler died, I could believe that, because he's not a main character. He's one of the, I mean, he's one of the main side characters, but he's still a side character in the end. You know, and I could, if they decide to kill him off, it could happen. I mean, they killed off that one lady from the first season. That, I mean, any of the side characters are up for grabs in a show like this. But Liz and Red are kind of the two mains. Like, you can't kill one of them off because you lose the essence of the show. So, <laughs> with that being said, I highly doubt they're going to kill Red halfway through a season, especially when you have three more seasons after this, so, obviously, but it's still very intense, it's, it's gripping, it's past my bedtime, but I'm like, I need to know what happens, so, here we go, on to the final of these three episodes, see you there. And finally, episode 12, Bastion Moreau conclusion. <laughs> Uh, I, I imagine this was the mid-season finale, because it really does feel like a mid-season finale, so if it wasn't, it's interesting that just a regular old episode would feel quite like a mid-season finale. But yeah, I mean, a lot of very interesting things. I mean, the threat that Cooper came at the president with, first of all, great way to start the episode, um, because, one second, let me just do this. I mean, yeah, I, I was really wondering how is he going to convince the president who doesn't want Red to be an issue because he's the only one that can possibly threaten whatever plan they have. What would he use to convince him for the stay of ex execution? So to say, basically, I'll start a war with Germany is <laughs> kind of, yeah, it's a badass threat. And it's like, as soon as he said that, only thought that crossed my mind was, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> I mean, that'll convince the guy, even though he doesn't want Red to be an issue, you let him out and maybe he stops part of your plan for now and you trust, you know, Anna to do her part, or you start a war with Germany. I mean, you kind of had to take the hit. And even, I mean, uh, one of the things Anna was talking about to him really made sense too, is they needed to keep him in that position. So it was basically, it was kind of a shot they were willing for him to take. You know, yes, you let Red out, but we'll handle him better than you getting kicked out of the spot because of what you didn't do to save the German spy. Um, so yeah, already a great start to the episode. And then just keeps going <laughs> because you have to deal with Red now working with the task force, but under the eye of Anna McMahon. And you just know she's going to be pulling her own strings. And sure enough, she sends Bastion Moreau after Red. And so I'm thinking, okay, so this is really going to tip the team off to know that Anna's the one in charge. Red already knows. <laughs> I mean, he already knows, and of course he does, because he's Reddington. And just the fact that he so easily was just like, oh yeah, you know she's lying to you, right? <laughs> like, and it's funny because he didn't actually know what the plan was. He just knew that it wasn't what Moreau was wanting to kill for. And so because of that, he was able to use that to flip him send him after Anna McMahon, and then the FBI shows up and saves her life, unfortunately. <laughs> and then they chase him down, but then he gets killed by the, the sniper, who's also, I guess, kind of the security detail for the president. It's all just... Damn. <laughs> what an episode. Oh. So yeah, I mean, overall, just everything comes together really well, and of course this now means that Red's on the road again. I'm a little surprised, and I guess they did this so that way if... They, they decide that they're done with him. They can send him back to the executioner's chair again. Um, I was a little surprised, though, that they, they didn't just go, yeah, he was executed behind closed doors, so he's dead now, and just announce that to the public instead of convincing everyone that he's on the run again because now all it takes is just somebody to see his face and he could get caught easily again. I mean, not really easily because it was Liz that got him arrested in the first place and not many people can arrest him 
in that way. Um, so I guess it won't be really easily easy to arrest him again. But it is kind of weird that the thought process of, well, we said we arrested him. We said we were going to execute him. Let's just say that it succeeded and he's dead and now he's a ghost. It, it would make them, I think, look a little less weak because the fact that the president called in to grant a stay and then he escapes shortly after the stay, it still makes the president look pretty weak. So I, I'm just surprised that they decided to go with that story instead of something else. Or even just say that he's still being held in prison because <laughs> it's not like anybody could really like go in there and check. They, they just say he's like held in some solitary where nobody can find him type of thing. I don't know. It just seems a little odd. Um, but anyways, so as far as kind of how it ends and what I'm thinking as far as what's going to happen the rest of the season, so clearly Anna and the president are like the two heads of whatever this conspiracy is. We still don't really know what the plan is because um, only Moreau looked at it and we didn't. he didn't tell us anything about it. And then, of course, put the dossier into the kid's backpack so it's just at some random kid's house, which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, so we don't really know anything about that. And I don't really have any theories about what the the conspiracy could be. Um, but it's definitely setting up to be a very interesting dynamic to the end of the season. Because now with Anna McMahon as the overseer for the task force, which, by the way, Harold Cooper dropping the best line I think I've heard in a long time. <laughs> it's like... I'm very happy to hear that. When she says that she's going to be in charge, she's like, oh, your sarcasm is noted. And he's like, no, I'm being genuine. She's like, you want me to take the job? Yes, because it's a job that typically has a high mortality rate. <laughs> oh, when he dropped that line, I lost it. It was brilliant. Oh. And yeah, I mean, she's one that I would not mind seeing taken out. That's what, again, I was a little sad that Bastion Road didn't manage to take her out. We don't, who is the girl? Like, is she related to McMahon somehow? Because she just goes and picks up the dossier, and then he stabs her and brings her in. Is it like her sister or her daughter or something? Or maybe her, like her male girl? I don't know. We, we never find out who she is, but McMahon didn't seem really torn up about it, so it's probably not a family member. So maybe it's just somebody that works for her. Um, I don't know. It just seemed very random that he kills the girl because, you know, obviously she was sent to pick up the dossier. And then we just don't ever find out how she was related to McMahon at all. It's just maybe we saw her earlier in the season. I don't remember her now. Um, but, yeah, it was kind of weird <laughs> in that sense. Um, but, yeah, the only other thing to talk about, though. Okay, no, there are two other things. First of all, we'll talk about Liz because, yeah, it does kind of feel like things with Red have been put on hold for now. Like, she's given up this crusade to find out who he is. Um, Wrestler obviously knows, and I do wonder if that's going to come up later this season, that Wrestler knows Reddington isn't Reddington. Um, but it does feel like it's been put on, put on hold for now. They didn't say for now at the end of the episode, you know, when Wrestler asks her, she's like, no, I am, I'm, I'm good. Like, you're good for now. And a lot of that comes down to there's something bigger going on that you're going to have to deal with right now. And he's important. But once this is all said and done, I would not be surprised if she goes back to looking again. Um, and, of course, Reddington still doesn't really know that she's the one that put him in jail in the first place. Like, because Dembe didn't tell her and Dembe knows. <laughs> so there's still going to be that friction probably in the future. Um, I don't really know what exactly to expect from that. But I assume that probably won't be talked about for the most part for the rest of the season because we'll be really focused on trying to take down whoever whoever's involved with this conspiracy and what they're trying to do. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. And the look on Wrestler's face as well made it seem like he's not really done looking into it. So I wonder if that it will come up because Wrestler's trying to get some clues here and there. Um, and then the other thing is, of course, the big one, Samar leaving the team. And yeah, I mean, I talked about a little bit earlier this season how frustrating it was that she was lying. And sure enough, she keeps lying, she keeps lying. And then in this episode, it kind of, it didn't really, I can't really say that if she hadn't experienced whatever it was, um, the, the whiteout, if she hadn't experienced that, I don't know for sure that she could have captured Moreau or saved uh, Miles' life. 
I, I don't think she could have because he's a, I mean, he's an expert assassin. I'm still not really intimidated by him. The voice was still very, I don't know. It just wasn't a great voice for me. Like he just, it sounded like he wanted to be intimidating, but again, he comes off as like a smoker who's been smoking way too long and his throat is like destroyed because of it. So it just, it sounds like that was the intimidation factor, but again, he sounds like an old man. That's about it. Um, but, I mean, he is a good assassin, and he showed that capability several times. So I don't know if Samara, even if she was at the top of her game, necessarily would have beaten him and would have saved Miles' life. Um, but, of course, she sees that as her fault, so she blames herself. Um, and then she makes the decision to leave the team. Now, the two things that are weird in this, first of all, she does finally tell Rom, but it sounds like she... Th I don't know, there are moments when it seemed like the aphasia is what... I think she self-diagnosed or was diagnosed with. It seemed like at moments it was better than she let on, but then at times it seemed it was worse than she let on. So still really confused about what stage of it she was in. And then the other weird thing is she doesn't tell Cooper. She goes up, she says she's leaving, he asks for a reason, she says she's not telling him, and she's like, it's time. And then she's gone. So... I don't really know why. <laughs> like, because it seems very easy to just tell him, hey, what happened last year? My, I was underwater too long. My brain was damaged. I can't continue in the field. I feel like that would have been a very easy explanation. So the fact that she didn't give him that explanation, I wonder if there's something else going on that we don't know about yet. And we might figure it out later. I don't know. It just... If this is her off the show, and we never get an answer for what exactly that last part meant, I'll be a little frustrated, but I guess we'll see, you know, whenever I get to the next episode, if she's still around. Um, it was also like, you know, for Rom, did she just up and leave entirely and leave him behind too? Or is she still going to be around for him and they're still going to stay together, but she's just not going to be working anymore with the FBI? I don't know. I, I really don't know what to expect from Samara from here on out. Um, but yeah, I, that, that final scene with Cooper is kind of what is making me go, what's going on with her? You know, because before all that, it just seemed like, okay, she's done because she can't deal with it anymore. But that final scene seemed very, I mean, it, it was obviously heartfelt because she's emotional about leaving and that makes sense. But the fact that she didn't tell him really sets off the something else is going on flags for me. And now maybe not, maybe she just doesn't want to admit that she has a problem. And if so, then that's her pride, I guess. But, I don't know, Samara doesn't seem like a super prideful person, so I don't think that would be it. I don't know, I just have a lot of questions for that. But, yeah, I mean, it's a great setup for the second half of the season. Um, I'm really excited, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's just so good to be back with this show, and honestly, it's so good this season that I almost kind of want to just go ahead and watch 7 and 8 after this. After I finish season six and not have to go to any other shows for a bit. But I know that wouldn't be fair because I have a lot of shows to catch up on. So <laughs> maybe a good idea for me to focus on other shows as well. And I have plenty of time so I could come back to this probably in a few weeks. But with all that being said though, that's it for this episode. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on these three episodes? Let me know what we can talk about and discuss. All that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe future Blacklist reviews. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Peace out.